Hey team, I'm going to walk you through building a coronavirus COVID-19 mapping app in React using Gatsby and Leaflet. If this is your first time here and you want to see more walkthroughs in developer tech, make sure you subscribe using the link below. The coronavirus is a terrible pandemic that has swiftly changed how we interact throughout the world day to day. Scientists all around the world are trying to fight this thing, and maps are one of the tools that they can use to help figure out some geographic patterns. Using a public API, we're going to put together a map that shows the confirmed cases for each country. The one that we're actually going to put together is going to look slightly different as it's not going to have all the same styles, but it's going to have the same core functionality that shows all the markers on the map with the confirmed cases, as well as a little pop up that shows more information for each country. The public API that we're going to use for our map is from Novel COVID. So the first thing we want to do is bootstrap our app. And for that, we're going to use this Gatsby starter I created for Leaflet. To get started, we're going to either need the Node or the Yarn API. I'm personally going to use Yarn, but we also need the Gatsby CLI. So once we have that all installed, we can go Gatsby new, my coronavirus map, the GitHub URL, and watch it install. Once it's installed, we can CD into the directory and then run yarn or node develop. And once our server spun up, we can open it in our browser. So the map that we bootstrapped here is going to be really basic. It really just has a pop up and a little zoom effect to show a demonstration of what it can do. So once we have that, the first thing we actually want to do is rip out that demo code. So we're going to go to our pages index file. We're actually going to rip out everything that's inside this map effect function. We also want to rip out the marker inside of our map. And once we do that, we have some variables that we can get rid of as well. And once we save that, we can reload our browser and we can see nothing's happening, which is expected. So something we're also going to do for convenience is rename our leaflet element destructured variable to map. That's just going to make it more clear that when we read it, that that's what we're working with. And we're also going to say if we don't have that map, let's return out of this function. So in order to get the data that we want, we have to use something to fetch it with. Now, I personally like using Axios because I think the API is just a little bit easier to use. So I'm going to go ahead and add Axios. But if you want, you can use the fetch API, another library, or really whatever you want to make that HTTP request. So now that we have Axios installed, let's actually import it. So import Axios from Axios. And now we want to actually make that request. So we're going to use a try catch block. We're going to set up a response variable above that. And then we're going to set the response equals to awaiting that Axios request. And we're going to paste in that URL from the GitHub. If it fails, we want to make sure we log that out. and return because it's not a valid response. But once we do that, we can console log out the response. Once we have that console log there, we can save it and open up our map, refresh it. And we'll now see this response object with the data object, which contains an array of all the countries that we want and their info. So now that we know what the response object looks like, we can actually destructure our data. We also want to create a constant called has data that basically checks that is valid. So is it an array? And does it have a length? And if it doesn't, return out because we don't have any valid data. Next thing we want to do is transform it into some geographic data. So I'm going to paste this in, but we can walk through it. So what we're doing is defining a GeoJSON document. It's a feature collection. Then we're going to map through all of our data. We're going to grab each country, grab the country info, and create a point using the Latin long, and then adding our country details to the properties of that GeoJSON document. This will allow us to better interface with Leaflet. Now that we have our GeoJSON document, we can actually add it to Leaflet. So we want to set the GeoJSON layers, add a new Leaflet GeoJSON instance using the GeoJSON. And then we can take that GeoJSON layers and then add it to the map. Once we do that, we can open back up our page, refresh, and we see all of the markers on our countries. But this quite isn't what we wanted, right? We wanted to show a custom marker with some tooltip. So how do we get there? So to do that, we're going to pass in an options object into our GeoJSON instance. We're going to use a property called point to layer in which we can use a new function to transform each layer that goes in through that GeoJSON instance into whatever we want. 
So to do this, we're going to actually paste in a function, and I'll go through this in a second. We're going to call it country point to layer, and we're going to set that point to layer property to that function. So before we actually see what this looks like, let's actually walk through this function. So the first thing that we do is we grab our feature and we destructure the properties from it. There we grab our data that we want. We also create some custom data, like a formatted date, and we want to transform the case string a little bit into the marker so that it only shows 1000K instead of 1000, for instance. That really is effective for the higher numbers. But once we do that, we create an HTML string where we create a template with all that data, create a new marker instance in which we have a new div icon instance and we set that HTML. And then finally, we have the rise on hover attribute, which allows it so when you hover over a marker, it rises up above all the other markers in that particular area. It just makes it easier to view. So now that we see what that can do, let's actually load it in the map. And that doesn't quite look like what we want either, does it? The last thing we want to do is actually set some CSS so that we can make it look how we want. So if we go to map.scss, I'm going to paste in this snippet here and go through it. First, we're setting up the styles for our icon marker, which is that base marker, setting the shape, the width, the size. If you hover over it, we're going to show our tooltip, which will be displayed none by default. And we're going to absolutely position that tooltip in relation to that marker. And then the rest is just styles to make it look how we want. So once we save that and load it in our browser, we now see all of our markers, which you can hover over and see our tooltip. So great, we're pretty much where we want, right? Except when you reload the page, it doesn't quite center, right? So what can we do about that? So the last thing we want to do is, if you noticed before, I had a default location there, which was for the map demo. So let's change that to zero, zero, just so it kind of loads in the middle of the world. But once we save that, reload the page, and we can see that it centers this for us. So if you want to take it up a notch, kind of like the original demo that I showed, you can do something with Mapbox and use it as a tile server, which will allow us to show a dark base map, which just helps those markers pop a little bit. Additionally, now that we have all those stats, we can create a dashboard effect and kind of arrange things kind of like Johns Hopkins University did in this awesome dashboard. So if you followed along, you just created a new map dashboard using the coronavirus data. Though this is a great demo for mapping purposes, please make sure that you and your loved ones are staying informed and safe out there. If you want to learn more about maps, like a summer road trip perhaps, definitely check out the links in the description. And if you like this video, definitely make sure you like it and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.